Hello, this is Ajahn Nisarano, and I am recording this from Newbury Buddhist Monastery outside Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. And just to introduce myself to those who don't know me, I am a disciple of Ajahn Brahm's. I was ordained by Ajahn Brahm almost uh, 23, fully ordained 23 years ago. And for 14 of those years, I have been li I lived in uh, almost 14, in Sri Lanka, and for eight of those years in a cave on a, on a mountain. And more recently, I have been living in Australia, and I'm now based in Newbury Buddhist Monastery. So today, of course, is the occasion for a guided meditation as an offering for Ajahn Brahm's 70th birthday. And this is the way we really repay a teacher, we honour a teacher, uh, pay respects to them is by practicing what they've taught us and offering our practice to our teacher. Often Ajahn Brahm mentions of course the, when the Buddha was passing away in to uh, passing into Parinibbana he mentions the best way to offer him is offer respects to him, pay respects to him is to practice and he mentions particularly Satipatthana for foundations or for focuses of mindfulness. But today I thought we could uh, this, uh, recollect the qualities of the Sangha and uh, use that as the basis for the guided meditation but with Ajahn Brahm in, in mind. And of course when we, the Buddha recommends the, the, the uh, recollection of the Sangha as a means to develop this inspiration in the Dhamma and develop the meaning of the Dhamma, to bring out this gladness, to bring up joy, bring up tranquility in the body and the mind, to bring up happiness and to bring up one-pointedness or stillness as Ajahn Brahm calls it. So this is the point of the, the recollection of the Sangha, but as I said, we'll recollect a particular spiritual friend or spiritual guide, a Kalyanamitta, and that will be Ajahn Brahm. <laughs> So it's very, it's very. We all need uh, these uh, spiritual guides or spiritual friends on on the spiritual path, on our path, to give us inspiration, to give us encouragement, but also to uh, act as a role model. Because you see that uh, the qualities of our of a spiritual friend or spiritual guide like Ajahn Brahm are the qualities we will tend to develop if we feel that connection with uh, that with him, will develop those qualities that he emphasises, like loving kindness, like uh, stillness, like peace, um, all these qualities, um, and of course the great emphasis on developing the Noble Eightfold Path. So what is a, a spiritual friend? Of course it's a, a morally, uh, a, a good person basically, a moral person, a virtuous person, and it's important to to uh, remember that a spiritual friend is not a guru. We have this concept in Hinduism, of course, and uh, it's not the same uh, in uh, Buddhism. It's not uh, total obedience, love, devotion and surrender. Sometimes Ajahn Brahm wouldn't mind that, I think. <laughs> but it's not what he encourages. So it's, uh, and we see that, that this is a spiritual friend you know, someone that we uh, we can be inspired with, someone we can learn from. And a spiritual friend, of course, teaches us, and more than just teaches us and guides us, they act as a role model for the qualities that we can develop too. Because we need this inspiration, as I mentioned before, when we recollect, uh, in the recollection of the Sangha, we need this inspiration to get this energy, this gladness and this joy, leading to tranquility, pasadi, and leading to happiness, and leading to a stillness. And of course, when we have a spiritual friend like Ajahn Brahm, like Ajahn Chah, any of our spiritual friends, 
they encourage us, they, they show us how we can go against our defilements, how we can reduce our defilements. And as I mentioned, it brings up a lot of confidence and faith, which gives us energy. And of course, <laughs> with a spiritual friend, we are willing to listen to uh, when they point out our faults. We are able to um, learn from them, to able to accept it, actually. If we don't uh, have respect, if we don't have faith, confidence in a teacher, we will not accept uh, any of their, when they point out our faults. But most importantly, and this is what Ajahn Brahm really encourages, is is this sense of inspiration and encouraging us. He often mentions he's like a uh, sports coach who is encouraging the team. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> and of course, he's very good at encouraging us. And the, the best example, of course, who was the best example of uh, a spiritual friend or spiritual guide, Kalyanamitta? The Buddha. And he was, he was the best spiritual guide because he was free of greed, hatred and delusion. And it was the only purpose for him teaching, uh, for uh, spreading the Dhamma, was out of compassion for future generations. As an example, he often said he meditated as an example for future generations. And the importance of a spiritual friend like the Buddha is that he shows us the way to go beyond birth, aging, illness, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, they say displeasure and despair, to free ourselves from that. That's the purpose of a Buddha. And the, the reason why a spiritual friend is so important is that they are, and the Buddha mentions this, that he, he said he did not see even a single thing that so causes unarisen wholesome qualities to arise and arisen unwholesome qualities to decrease or decline as a good spiritual friend. So it's so important and it's really, it is, it's very humbling actually to reflect that we are, our, our lives, our minds particularly, are very conditioned by the influences that we encounter we're very affected by the company we keep. And uh, so this is something that uh, Ajahn Brahm often mentions, that he is uh, brainwashing us, that the Buddha <laughs> is brainwashing us. But he said this is good brainwashing because the, the uh, test for any brainwashing are the results. Is it leading to happiness, good qualities, um, to less craving, less wanting, uh, more peace, more stillness in the mind. And we are, of course, we are so conditioned by so many things, we don't, <laughs> often we don't realise how much we've taken on board, as they say, from our parents, from our schooling, from our society, the cultures that we live in. And it's very important in a Buddhist context, probably from our past lives too. We're bringing baggage from the past as well. And these have all conditioned the uh, character, the personality we have at this moment. So we realise that uh, this, what we take to be ourselves, is actually a work in progress. These qualities we can develop uh, and are changing all the time. And so this is uh, good news because we can, as it were, take on good influences, good conditioning, good brainwashing, <laughs> and in that way go in, in a good direction. And it's very interesting, I, I reflect on it myself quite often, that uh, when we hear teachings from different teachers, we, you can notice that uh, sometimes a particular teacher you can hear the same teaching from that teacher as you may have heard from others, but it will go deep. You will connect with it. You'll understand it. And of course, this is some my experience with Ajahn Brahm and uh, with other teachers I've encountered in my life. So really, um, the spiritual friend, the spiritual guide enables us to connect with the Dhamma at a much deeper level. And in the process, we can develop the Noble Eightfold Path, that's the aim of it. And 
of course, you know, we, we, we tend to flock, to, we have this saying in English, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> and so it's good if we flock together with good friends, you know, good uh, companions in the holy life, in the spiritual life like Ajahn Brahm, like these teachers that we can really connect with, that we can really develop good qualities um, in our minds and in our hearts, and to avoid uh, bad friends, uh, papa mita, as the Buddha called them. These are a cause for increasing our negative qualities. We don't need that. <laughs> Nobody needs that. Uh, so, so uh, it's very important to, to uh, r reflect what qualities we need uh, when we meet a Kalyanamita, a spiritual friend or a spiritual guide. And we have that saying, don't we, that uh, when the teacher is ready, the st uh, when the student is ready, sorry, the teacher appears. And it's sort of like, this is so often the case that, as I said before, we can hear teachings from various teachers, but suddenly when we meet someone, we, a teacher we can really connect with, we really understand. And also it tends to be, isn't it, that in our lives, when the circumstances of our lives, particularly when there is uh, difficulties in our lives, we tend to be more open to learning. And that's an important quality when we uh, encounter a spiritual friend or guide, that we're open to them and not because we all have very strong, some people have very strong views actually and opinions which make it almost impossible to hear the message from another person. And this is why so often the qualities of a teacher, you know, the kindness and uh, these uh, compassion, uh, this acceptance, these qualities can actually cut through a lot of these views and opinions. Uh, which make us, if we have a lot of them, like a cup that is full. The Buddha used this uh, image too. You can't pour anything more into a full cup. So we need that openness and we need also humbleness and humility too. And uh, to have a respect for that person that we uh, regard as a spiritual friend. They'll only be a spiritual friend if we have respect for them. And of course, you know, their conduct and their ethical conduct, the way they are, the way they behave and speak, will be uh, sort of an example to us. And we also can develop, we need to develop a sort of confidence and faith, not blind confidence, not blind faith, but develop this faith yeah, um, in a, a spiritual guide. And to have a sincere interest in what uh, uh, in the Dhamma is very important and, and to ask, as Ajahn Brahm is always saying, to ask questions <laughs> because and to, to uh, have sort of an intelligence and wisdom to investigate what we're hearing, you know, not just taking it in and not reflecting on it at all. Um, and these are qualities that we need um, when we encounter a Kalyanamitta, a spiritual friend. And I'd like to end with a nice, before we start the guided meditation, a nice summary the Buddha gives in one of the suttas on a friend. And he says here that a friend, he is dear, respected and esteemed, a speaker and one who endures speech. He gives deep talks and does not enjoin one to do what is wrong. The person here in whom these qualities are found are a friend, benevolent and compassionate. Even if one is dismissed by the, such a person, one desiring a friend should resort to such a person. So I think that's quite nice. It covers a lot of the qualities of Ajahn Brahm. I've actually given a talk on that. So uh, using Ajahn Brahm as the... Uh, as the Kalyanamitta. So now we can do, our, uh, I will conduct the guided meditation and so we can begin by closing our eyes and coming into the present and adjusting the body to make it comfortable, balancing the head over the shoulders and the shoulders over the hips. Wherever we are, find ourselves sitting on a chair, 
sitting on a cushion. And the hands can be in our lap or on our knees, whatever we find most comfortable for the meditation. And we can let go of the past and the future, just to be here in the oasis of the present moment. The past has gone. And the future, who knows what will come. Just to be here now. And we can relax the body mentally, give it this kindness, this warm attention, starting with the head, the top of the head, back of the head and sides of the head, just soothing them gently with this warm, relaxing attention. Moving our attention down to the forehead, around the eyes and the cheeks, the face and the mouth and chin, soothing the face, allowing any tension to dissolve, to relax. Now bringing to mind the neck, the throat, relaxing it, moving the attention all around it, giving it a good mental massage. Now bringing to mind the right shoulder starting at the neck and moving our attention along the right shoulder, soothing it, relaxing any tension, any strain, letting go of the burdens of the day. Now bringing to mind the right arm, starting at the top of the right arm and moving our attention slowly down the right arm, all around it, to include the wrist, the hand and the fingers and the elbow, soothing them, relaxing them with this kind attention.
now bringing to mind the left shoulder, beginning, starting at the neck and moving along the left shoulder, relaxing and soothing any tension, tightness, hardness, letting it dissolve. bringing to mind the left arm, starting at the top of the left arm and moving our attention slowly down the left arm all around to include the elbow, the wrist, hand and fingers of the left hand. Now bringing to mind the back, starting just below the shoulders and moving our attention slowly down the back, relaxing, soothing, mentally massaging any tension, any painful areas, any hard areas with this warm, kind attention. And now we can bring to mind the front of the body, starting just below the shoulders and moving the attention slowly down the front of the body to include the chest, the diaphragm, the stomach and the abdomen, soothing them, relaxing them as we go. bringing to mind the right leg, starting at the top of the right leg and moving our attention slowly down the right leg to include the knee, the ankle, foot and toes of the right foot, soothing and relaxing them, giving the right leg a mental massage.
Now bringing to mind the left leg, starting at the top of the left leg and moving our attention slowly down the left leg, all around it to include the knee, the ankle, the foot and the toes of the left leg. Now bringing to mind the whole body, just sitting as you, as it is, just aware of whatever is happening in the present moment, just sitting here, wherever it here is. Enjoying being present. And now we can visualize Ajahn Brahm wherever we remember him, having seen him, whether it's in person or online, just bringing Ajahn Brahm to mind. Maybe coming in to a meditation hall bowing to Ajahn Brahm, to the Buddha, to Ajahn Brahm, and sitting down, spending time with Ajahn Brahm. And we can picture Ajahn Brahm as clearly as we can bringing him to mind and getting in touch with whatever feeling we've experienced being in Ajahn Brahm's presence or watching him online. Maybe it's a feeling of loving kindness, a feeling of kindness, his kindness. Maybe it's a feeling of joy or thanks, or a feeling of inspiration, or a feeling of humour, a lightness of being. Just seeing what feeling comes up for us and getting in touch with that feeling. And we can fill ourselves with this feeling, whether it be uh, kindness, compassion, friendliness, joy, thankfulness, inspiration or 
humour, filling us from head to toe, filling the body and the mind, and bathing any negative qualities in the mind with this wholesome feeling, this wholesome emotion. And when we, be, when we become aware of the breath coming in and out, we can breathe this feeling, whether it be joy, whether it be kindness, humour, whatever the feeling we've experienced, inspiration, thankfulness, breathing it in and breathing it out. And for those who like uh, mantras, words, we can either use a sadhu, that's very traditional, or we can use awesome, or perhaps a thanks, thank you. Breathing it in, this feeling, with a word, and breathing it out. And if we find the feeling reduces, as it often can, we can bring Ajahn Brahm to mind as we originally pictured him. And now I will be silent and we can continue to develop this feeling, the feeling we're experiencing with the breath, whether it be joy, inspiration, kindness.
coming close to the end of the meditation so we can dedicate the energy we've created through this meditation whatever feeling of joy, thankfulness, inspiration, faith, humor, kindness, compassion and we can dedicate it, offer it to our teacher, Dhamma teachers our spiritual friends or guides, the Kalyanamittas and especially to Ajahn Brahm on the occasion of his 70th birthday offering this feeling of joy, thankfulness, whatever the feeling was offering it to you, Bhante out of enormous thanks and respect for all that you have given us and the changes we have experienced from practicing your teachings. And we wish that you may have a long life, longer life, good health, and experience the highest spiritual happiness. And may you, Bhante, continue to teach us and inspire us for a long time to come. And we can share this feeling, this joy or inspiration, kindness with everybody listening or watching, watching this live streaming, giving this gift of this positive emotion, sharing it. And we can radiate this feeling of joy, inspiration, thanks, thankfulness, whatever we developed around the area we find we are in at the moment, radiating it in ever widening circles to include all beings, all the seen, all the unseen beings, animals, insects, reptiles, etc people, all beings in the world and in all realms of existence. And we can come back to ourselves and focus on this fear, the feeling that we have developed during the meditation and make the aspiration may I develop these good qualities of the spiritual friend Ajahn Brahm these positive, joyful, inspired, kind, thankful emotions to develop them more and more. And keeping in mind Ajahn Brahm as a spiritual friend or guide. And may we share these good qualities and these good feelings of joy, thankfulness, or whatever, with others. And may our speech and actions come from these good qualities that Ajahn Brahm has inspired in us. And may we anchor the feelings these uh, of good qualities that we have developed from reflecting on Ajahn Brahm as our spirit teacher, friend, guide, may we anchor them in our hearts.
and as we're getting close to the end we can reflect on how we feel now do we feel any different than from before and were we able to get in touch with this with the f with feelings of joy or appreciation kindness inspiration thanks whatever it was from reflecting thinking of good qualities of our spiritual friend Ajahn Brahm and we can ask what caused these feelings to arise what triggered them And when I ring the bell three times, please come out of the meditation. We can uh, finish the meditation at that stage. Sadhu, Ajahn Brahm. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you.